Distill, the Spirited Deck Builder. Uh, and I'm going to take a little bit of time to just do a brief overview of the rules for you today so you can get a quick start into uh, playing Distilled on Tabletop Simulator. The artwork for Distilled is by no means finished. The only thing that is close to finish is what you see here, the cover of the game done by Eric Evanson. Uh, he will be doing all art and illustration and graphic design for the game. Uh, but right now it is purely just uh, placeholder prototypes uh, by me because I'm really looking for playtest feedback and gameplay feedback right now. This is set to release on Kickstarter in early 2021. So let's get started. Uh, this is normally you'd have the people sitting at the table already and then you'd hit the start game button. Um, since it's only me, I've set it up so it's going to auto deal to all four people. Uh, the scripting was done by Seth Barrier, who's a really accomplished programmer and good friend of mine, uh, who's helped to make this game run much smoother on Tabletop Simulator. As you'll see, the first thing you're going to start with is you're going to have these distillery identities. You're going to choose one. Uh, it's essentially going to give you a little bit of an advantage throughout the game. Uh, so uh, you'll choose one, and you're going to place the other one um, in the draft. So here I've placed one on my distillery, and here I've placed it on the draft, which is the trash. Uh, after that, everyone has a number of cards uh, that they would draw. Uh, before I dive into that, to give you a brief overview, in Distilled, you're an apprentice distiller, uh, hoping to uh, someday uh, be a master distiller. Uh, you're going to be able to do that by running your distillery, which you see before you in this player mat. Um, you're going to be purchasing ingredients, storing ingredients and items. Uh, you're also then going to be distilling things into alcohol and hopefully send them off to the warehouse to age and then hopefully selling them for uh, big money, uh, which will result in not only points, but then also perhaps uh, bigger and better items as well. Uh, this takes the place uh, over a number of different rounds. Uh, within each round is three separate phases. Uh, those phases uh, are highlighted on a player aid on the top as well as in the instruction manual on the right. Uh, these three phases are the inventory phase, the distillery phase, and the silent season phase. I'll go over each of these in a little bit more detail in a second. You win the game by becoming the master distiller. The master distiller is the person with the most uh, spirit points. Spirit points are any sort of star that you find anywhere with the numerical amount on the inside of it. Um, those spirit points are counted at the end of the game in a couple different ways. First, any, any sort of spirit points found in spirits that you make. Spirits you make are going to be uh, a result of you distilling them, aging them, and selling them. And then they're going to be sitting up in this kind of crafted spirits holding area. You count all the spirit points in those decks as one of your areas. You also count all the um, uh, uh, distillers awards. These are right now always one less than the number of players that are playing. Uh, and these are global awards that everyone's going to. So for this one, most spirit produced from Euro Europe. Whoever has produced the most spirit from Europe will get five extra points. If two people have tied that, they each get five points. So you look for those. That's one of about 20 different goals that are randomly assigned in the game. Thirdly, uh, you can also get points from distillery upgrades. You're going to find distillery upgrades uh, for sale uh, here as well as along the top. Um, uh, these different upgrades are going to get you a variety of different points, everything from larger points like eight points to smaller points like one. And these are going to be installed in your distillery themselves uh, throughout the game. So that's another area if you get any points. And finally, the last place you get points is any cards you have stored in your distillery or in your discard and draw pile. Uh, uh, you take the value, the purchasing value of all of those cards and divide it by three. Um, and now I'll talk about the anatomy of a card. A card, if we zoom in here, has a couple different things on it. We can see that in the, uh, I was just talking about value. That is the top left amount there. Uh, this, this barley's value is two. Uh, that means I can use this barley to buy other things and it's worth about two coin to, or it is worth two coin to be able to spend on other things. So, uh, for instance, if I had two barleys, I would be able to afford this potato because the cost of the item in the market or the ingredient in the market is in the bottom right. So two of these barleys is two each would be able to allow me to afford to buy this one potato. So the, the value is in the top left, the cost is in the bottom right. We see our spirit points here uh, as well. We see a little number here. This essentially means how many cards of those of that exact type are in the deck. And of course the name uh, and the category above. 
Some things have some actions as well associated with it. So we see on this yeast, it has an action. Uh, growth, four plus yeast cards in hand equals one draw card, draw one card from the deck or the mountain spring water. So some have actions as well. Okay. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the uh, architecture of what we see here in front of us. This is the market. Starting in the middle, uh, I forgot to mention the game ends when both of these decks go away. So when both of these decks are completely depleted, uh, the game is over. Um, for your first game of Distilled, I would recommend you take out two yeast and two water per player after you've dealt everything out. So I would take, I would take two of these out right now and two of these out right now. Uh, that's going to simulate a little bit closer to the play length uh, that you would find uh, in real life. As we know, Tabletop Simulator can be a little slow. Um, so it's just going to speed the game up a little bit because at the start of each turn, you're going to draw one of these cards. Each player is. Uh, so that's your basic ingredients in the center. Uh, then down below, we see we have four uh, essentially basic common um, item categories. These are just stacks of the same card, four of them. So four glass bottles, four plastic bottles, and so on and so forth. Common items for sale. Below that are ingredients. Our ingredients are usually sugars, which are green, and say sugar at the top. But sometimes we might get a special water or a special yeast in there as well. These are for sale on the market, and they rotate through uh, when people buy things. And the draw pile for that is right here. On the right-hand side is our distillery upgrades. This is how we're going to be able to uh, new, add new features to our distillery that might allow us to do extra special things on our turn. Uh, and we're going to draw those from here. And again, we're going to be able to purchase those on our turn if we'd like. Another thing we can purchase on our turn are the items. These are barrels and bottles that could be in our distillery. Um, and those would be on our left-hand side and be drawn from this pile. Up at the top, we have our age tracker. Uh, whenever we age a spirit, it's going to move down this, this uh, chronological year tracker. And every time we age a spirit, we're going to add some flavor to it, to, to add some richness to it. Um, we're usually going to add two flavor every year you age, uh, unless the card says otherwise. Uh, we don't look at these flavor cards. So I'm going to show you one now, but we usually would not look at them. Um, flavor cards uh, essentially are different things that will add some richness and, and variety to your spirit. In this case, it comes with a, a spirit point as well as some value to be able to purchase items later too, so uh, an ingredient. So that's actually a pretty good card to have. There, uh, there are some cards that are zeros, some that are twos, uh, some that uh, there's even a few negative ones in there too. Up at the top, we have our prestigious distillery upgrades. These are end game uh, upgrades. Uh, they can be upgraded any time if purchased, uh, but really only work at the end game. These can be installed on top of the normal distillery upgrades. Uh, there's only five of these. There's limited out of about 15 that are random. So the five are randomly picked uh, for each game. And then finally, we see up here our spirit labels. Our spirit labels go on top of a spirit stack that we make uh, on our turn. The first person to make a spirit uh, is going to get the topmost one. And you'll notice that this one has is worth five uh, coins. So actually, in addition to other things that are part of the spirit, I'm going to use five more to build, uh, uh, essentially sell and buy something big for that. Um, you can see the next person to make vodka, they would only have three coins, so it's not worth as much. We can also see that sometimes there's a special uh, category. I can make vodka with lots of different things, but if I have a specific ingredient there, sometimes I get a little bit more victory points as well, which we'll see in a second. Couple other things to look at. We already talked about the draft. I don't know what's going on over here, but we'll just, uh, there we go. Uh, the draft is over there. Uh, on the left hand side is alcohol, which I'll get to in a second. Up above, we can put our crafted spirits here. We can keep track of our score throughout the game here. And of course, like I said, we have a handy player aid here as well. And you can, of course, move that down. Maybe I'll do that to show you down here. And we have our instruction manual over on the side. On this side over here, this was used to set up, so you don't need, you can ignore those things. Okay, let's look at our distillery player map. Essentially, this represents our distillery. Uh, we're looking at a pretty much empty distillery right now, so uh, that's where those upgrades can come in handy. Uh, we can see our identity. We're a European distillery. We have a little warehouse here as well. On our left-hand side is where we can throw our water, our yeast, and our sugars into. This is one giant vat. You want to kind of um, imagine that this is a giant vat uh, where everything is being dumped into and mixed together. 
Uh, on the right-hand side, though, it's different. It's our shelf. Uh, we can put as many different bottles and barrels as we want in there and pick and choose uh, as, as, as needed from that when we need to. Um, we see we have a, a draw card, a draw pile, and a discard pile. And then finally, uh, taking up some of the most real estate on the board is our distillery recipe guide. Uh, this is showing us how to make different spirits. We can see on the left-hand side is uh, the different spirits that we can make uh, associated with the victory points or spirit points, if you will. Um, what region they're from is in blue. And then along uh, the, the bulk of it is in green. And those are the different sugars. Um, to explain this very briefly, uh, and I'm going to talk about maybe, let's, let's talk about making bourbon. I can get four points for victory, victory points or spirit points in bourbon. It's from the Americas. I only need one checkbox in there. So I do not need grain, rye, corn, and barley. I just need one. I could have grain in there and I have made bourbon. If I want to make extra special bourbon, a high quality bourbon, uh, getting six points for spirit points instead of four, I need to have corn in there. I can still have grain or, or rye, but I need to have corn to get that. So yes, you need to have a minimum of one check mark. If I have a gray X, so for instance, if rice happens to get into my bourbon, I have no longer made bourbon. I have most likely made moonshine. A moonshine is when uh, I have not made anything else, but I've always made moonshine. You can always make shine um, uh, no matter what you put in here. Um, and sometimes that can be actually quite high quality. You can also see that I need a certain barrel. If I go over to my bourbon, I can see I need a toasted oak barrel uh, um, to actually make my bourbon. And it has to be aged for at least two years uh, to be qualified as bourbon. If all of those things are fulfilled, that's when I get to um, claim uh, the specific label, the bourbon label up here, and get the victory points for it as well as the money. So that is the um, recipe guide. Um, okay, so let's uh, walk through just a, a typical turn, a typical round in distilled. Um, the first thing that it, you should note is, like I said before, is there's three different phases. The inventory phase, which is focused mainly on working with your cards that are in your hand that you've drawn. The distillery phase, which is focused mainly on things that happen in your distillery. And finally, the silent season phase, which is essentially cleanup. The inventory phase happens one in, um, uh, in player order. Let's pretend I was first player. That's what this, this token is, randomly dealt to one person. Um, this is starts with someone randomly, but then when someone distills, they claim this first player token for the next uh, round. Uh, so starting with the first player token, the first thing they're going to do, of course, is they're going to draw five cards in their hand by pressing this button. Um, the different cards we have, we all have the exact same 10 cards that we start with. We're going to start with four yeast, four water, one plastic barrel, and one mason jar that I don't see in here, but it, or that it's in the stack still. Everyone starts with the exact same. Uh, hand or uh, stack. So I've drawn my five cards, but you'll notice the first thing I need to do is I draw one basic ingredient card. That's that timer at the middle of the game. So I'm actually going to draw uh, one yeast card. I'm going to hit one, the number one on my keyboard that'll automatically draw it into my hand. And then to make things easier for everyone to see, I'm just going to lay these out in front of me. Now on my turn, I can have a couple different choices on, on the inventory phase. First, I need to decide if I'm going to store anything, and I think I will. I'm going to, by storing things, I'm getting ready for a future distill action. Uh, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take my water, and I'm going to hover it over this, and it will auto-rotate to store here. Uh, and I can store as many water as I want, or as few water, as many sugars or as few, and as many yeast or as few. Uh, just remember, when I go to distill, I'm gathering everything up. I don't get to leave things behind. I can store as many things on my turn as I want. So I'm also going to store this barrel over here, this plastic barrel. Um, when I store something, I cannot use it for anything else. It is stored. It is in a vat of liquid over here, or it's on a shelf in my distillery. I cannot use it for other things. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the play phase, or the, sorry, the play uh, action within my phase. The play action essentially means that I can do uh, two different things on the card if allowed. The first says uh, that I could use the, the actions, the, the card's action. And I'm actually going to do this because I happen to have four yeast in my hand. Growth says if you have four or more yeast cards in your hand, you can draw one card from the deck. So I'm actually going to get to draw one more card here, uh, which is a water. Okay, so I've, now I've drawn one more. I could uh, um, 
normally I'd say, yes, I could add this, but I remember I've already gone through the store phase, so I can't necessarily do that, but that's okay. Uh, I've now got five cards to, to use. I use the four plus card yeast power. I can only do it once per turn, but I can still use these to purchase. So notice, and this is unique and distilled in the fact that you can use both the action on the card as well as the purchase power. So I have one, two, three, four, five coin to spend in the shop. If I spend it, I can spend it on a couple different things. Now notice a European distillery, I have barley for one less and grain. So I think I'm actually going to buy this barley for not three, but for two. So if I buy that for two, I'm not going to refresh yet. Buy that for two. Uh, I still have five, uh, five coins. I still have three coins left. I think I'm going to buy a mountain spring water uh, and perhaps also a green bottle. Okay. I could have maybe with all that five, I could have just bought a worm tub for five as well. If I had done that, this would have immediately installed in my distillery. Okay. And if possible, I could have used it, its power that turn. But instead, I bought these three cards, which is fine. Uh, so I'm going to put these into my discard. And I'm also going to gather these all and put these into my discard. Okay. Since this is a deck building game, when these things go into my discard, eventually I'm not going to have anything else to draw here. This is all going to get shuffled and turn into my, my draw pile. So I've done that. At the end of my turn, I'm going to refresh for the next player by clicking these buttons with some new things to come out. Uh, and then it's going to pay, play is going to pass the next player to my right. Uh, and so everyone else will do that as well. Go all the way through until this green player is finished. And then we will move on to the distillery phase. Now the distillery phase happens on your own player mat. And this happens concurrently. So each player can do this on their own at the same time. But you do have to follow the sell, age, and distill order. S-A-D or A-B-C. <clears throat> The reason for this is because uh, you you simply cannot age a, a liquor and then sell it. Uh, it will take multiple turns to age or multiple years. Um, so to sell something, I'm not going to go through the full details. I'm just going to talk about it very quickly. Um, to sell a spirit, you're essentially going to have um, uh, some sort of uh, spirit in your warehouse here. Uh, and you're going to count up the value and purchase things with it. I'll go through that in a second. To age a spirit, you're essentially going to be moving a token along, a barrel token along this age track and adding some flavor cards, potentially, to your to your deck. And the distill is the, is the key part, uh, which I'm going to do right now very quickly uh, by cheating, just to show you. Uh, the way you distill things, I'll do two waters, is uh, to distill, and it's on actually on your um, player mat as well. You're going to count up all the yeast and water first. So I have two water and one yeast, and you're going to draw that many alcohol cards into your hand. Okay, so I'm going to hit the number three because I have three total. I'm then, just to make it easier, I'm going to bring these out here in front of me. I'm now going to gather everything. I don't get to pick and choose. Everything from my washback, uh, and I'm going to group this all together into one stack. This is representing the fermentation process in the washback. The yeast is eating the sugars and turning this into alcohol. But when you distill something, and uh, what you're going to do is you're going to flip that over into one big group. You haven't put it in a barrel yet. You're going to shuffle it up. And you're going to take the top card and the bottom card. This represents taking the head and the tail of the, of the run. Uh, when you distill liquor, the first part of the run and the last part of the run is actually toxic. But and people don't drink it, but it is reused in the spirit for future spirits. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the top card and I'm pushing my luck. If this is that agave, then I'm in trouble. Uh, and it's not, it's okay. It's an alcohol card, which is okay. That can be used in any of the three categories in the future, not as an actual agave, for instance, but as a sugar, um, if I needed to. And then I'm going to flip this and I'm going to take this card as well. So I have some, a few cards left. I don't need to look at those. I'm going to send them to my warehouse. I'm going to put it in a, in a barrel. I'm going to put this one on top of it, signify this, this uh, spirit is being made. And I'm going to send this one to the warehouse as well um, to some, signify that it's sitting in the warehouse. <clears throat> now, a something in a plastic barrel cannot age, so I'm going to have to sell this on my next turn, which is okay. Um, if I were to age it, well, here, so I'll, I'm going to stop there. That would be... Uh, for me, I had skipped the sell and age steps and I distilled and I would be done and I'd move on to the silent season phase. 
In the silent season phase, I would draw five new cards. I would uh, tally some points. I would take the, the notice. I would take the distill because I distilled. I would take the first player token. Of course, I already own it. But if someone else did and I didn't that turn, they would take it from me and become the first player um, and get ready to start the next round. Uh, so with that, though, I'm going to uh, act like we went an entire round and I would now go to the age step. Um, I've, I've moved through the inventory phase again. I'm now to the distillery phase of my second turn on the second round of the game. Um, and I, I could age. Okay. Now I can't age my plastic barrel because a plastic barrel is not allowed to. So I'm not actually going to age, but I would show you what I would do. If this was in for say, uh, this oak barrel, or, uh, let's say this clay barrel, for instance, a clay barrel can age. I would move this along the track. I would pick this up and move it. And I would take two of these cards without looking at them. Okay, and I would pick this up and I would place these cards on the deck uh, and then put this back down because eventually I'm going to mix these up and do some other, uh, I'm going to um, do some other things when I sell. I'm adding some flavor blindly to the deck, but I of course didn't do that uh, because it's a plastic barrel. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell because that, as you can see, is the first thing in the category. Um, to sell something, what you're going to essentially do is you're gonna pick up your entire stack and you're gonna lay it out here. Um, I've found uh, an easy way to do this is to um, count how many cards I have. Oops, sorry. Let's see if I can just get that, thank you. Uh, and what I can count is I can count six and I hit the number six, I put it into my hand and then it's easier for me to lay out and show on the table what I've sold. Now I clearly have not made anything of worth here. It's agave, uh, if I look at my grid, uh, if I had agave in an oak um, cask and I aged it for at least a year, I could have made tequila, but I didn't. It's in a plastic barrel. So because of that, unfortunately, I did not fulfill the barrel or the age uh, requirements. So I have unfortunately made moonshine. But uh, I forgot to do one thing, uh, which I'm going to do right now. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm just going to cheat again. Uh, in order to sell, you need to have a bottle stored in your distillery. So let's just say I had that, and I would have, because I would have drawn those cards, stored it, and so on and so forth. Um, if you don't have one, then you have to pay a penalty. So I have that here. I now can sell. I can say, yes, I'm going to sell it in this uh, mason jar bottle. I'm going to sell moonshine. Um, so what that means is since I did not fulfill tequila, I cannot claim the tequila uh, label, but I can claim the moonshine label. Unfortunately, as you see, the moonshine label is zero victory points and also comes with no bind power. But notice on my mason jar, if I do bottle moonshine, which I just did in a mason jar, I have three extra dollars to spend this, this turn. Because at the end of your sell turn, you get to spend the total value you have added up. So I have here three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's not that much, but it's actually pretty good. And I technically could buy the silent season, or I could buy the worm tub or the modern mill and some other things too. Okay. So, so the selling, uh, especially when you make something a little bit better than kind of this very quick, uh, uh, junky moonshine that I've made, uh, I'd be able to spend a lot of money. Maybe I'd be able to afford the regional distiller or even, uh, perhaps a national distillery, um, to be able to install. So that's the sell action. Uh, if I, if I had sold this, if I had aged this, of course, I might've had, uh, some different, uh, flavors as well. Uh, here, maybe this goes well with my moonshine. I've got some rubber tires, an earthy rubber tire flavor in this plastic barrel. Um, you see, unfortunately, there is a couple, and I drew one. There's, there, I think, three in the entire 30. There's 10% of the flavors are negative, so I have a negative victory point there. At the end of the game, I'm going to count all this up, um, and so we'll see I have one victory point, two, three, and there's four, so that's seven, eight, none with the moonshine, so eight minus one. So this, this moonshine was worth seven victory points at the end of the game, or, or spirit points. So again, at the end of the game, uh, you're going to be counting up what's the spirits you make, as well as a couple other key areas uh, um, for power, um, uh, or for, sorry, for spirit points. Um, and again, that happens at the end, the end of the game happens when both of these decks disappear, you finish out that round and then you play one more final round at the end of that round, you tally up all the points. If you haven't been doing so, 
up until now with your spirit decks and you tally up all the other points for your distillery upgrades and the awards as well as your liquidation of your stock and that goes both what's stored in your distillery as well as what's in your decks and your draw and discard decks uh, and again remember you divide that by three the total value so i would take the value of this is one if i had three waters uh in my deck i would get one more point out of it uh, whoever has the most points is the winner of distilled so i hope this has been helpful to you and i really and sincerely hope that uh, you're able to um, not only enjoy yourself when you play with you and your friends but also perhaps be able to uh, provide some feedback to me as well uh, through uh, info at distilledgame.com. You can also find some more information and, and Board Game Geek and Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff as well. So again, I hope uh, you have enjoyed your time. Thank you so much for watching and um, enjoy playing Distilled.